Hey friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using Lawn Fawn's Kangarific, the Kangarific add-on, and all the party hats. So I've stamped those images out on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. So I am going to start with these adorable kangaroos, and I decided to use the E30s for them today. So I'm going to use E35, E37, and E39. I prefer to color darkest to lightest, so I'm starting with that E39 and laying in my shadows wherever I think that they should go. Since all of these kangaroos are facing the same direction toward the right, their shadows are going to fall on the left-hand side. It turned out, though, that my E37 was a little bit darker than the E39, so I just decided to go right back over that. I used it a little bit more sparingly in a few less places, so we still have a bit of that E39 there working as a mid-tone. And then I'm going to start blending that out with the E35. I will end up introducing a fourth shade in just a little bit, but I'm going to use these first three shades for the majority of the body. I did leave a little bit of lighter area on the face and on the belly. I just like those areas to typically be a bit lighter so you can really make out their features. So I'm going to bring in the E33 for that. And I'll just continue blending until this sweet little kangaroo is all filled in. Then I'm going to move on to the little baby kangaroos and I'll color them in the same way. Except this time I'm starting with that E37 since that is the darker marker. And then I'll blend that out with the E39. I did do the shadows just slightly different on this guy since his head is turned backwards. So his head is actually turned toward the left. So I put the shadows on his head toward the right. And I also put a little shadow under his throat where it is kind of casting a shadow over his back. Um, but other than that, I colored him in the same way. And then this last little guy is going to get colored in just like the mama because they're basically almost identical in position, which I actually think is super cute because babies do tend to mimic their mamas as they learn how to do things. And I just love his little expression with his eyes closed in bliss. It's just so, so cute. I love this set so much. And then while I have these colors out, I'm going to use the lightest three to do the top edge of the kookaburra's wing and tail. And I did Google reference photos to figure out how this should be colored because they're not native to where I live in North America. So I just wanted to be as accurate as possible. And then for their bodies, it looked like more of like a buff beige. So I went with E30, E31, and just the slightest bit of E33 under that wing for some extra shadow. And then I'll also use these shades for the rocks. I wanted them to be more of like an earthy tone. So I'm going to start with these browns and then I'll add something more to that in just a bit. So I just added that E33 in wherever the little cracks and crevices were drawn and then blended out from there. I did go back and add a few little dots with the E33 and then I will also bring in the E35 to make those a little bit darker. But like I said, I'm going to be adding a little bit more to those in just a few minutes. So it's going to fade a bit and just look a bit more natural. I'm going to move on to some olive greens. I'm using YG93, YG95, and YG97 for my frilled lizard. So I'm using that YG97 first on the back of his frill and then the lower part of his body and legs and tail. Blending out with the YG95 and then using the YG93 for a highlight. And then I also decided to use just the darkest two shades for the leaves on these little flowers that kind of have like a pom-pom style. I did actually bring in the lightest shade in there as well. Even though the area was super small, it was looking a little bit dark. So I just colored over it with the lightest shade to lighten that up a bit. And then for the lower part of the kookaburra's wing and tail, I brought in BG32. 
BG45 and BG49. And I really love how vibrant and blue that is. I think it looks so pretty. Oh, I wish we had those birds here. Maybe someday I'll get to go to Australia and see them in person. I really hope so. I'm also going to color in the gift with these shades. I think it's such a gorgeous combo of blue. I wanted to have little pops of it on other parts of the card. So I did that. And then I'll also do some of the stripes on the party hats. I just picked a different stripe on each of them so they didn't look absolutely identical, but they will all have the same color palette. So they'll be tied together in that way. For the kookaburra's beak, I decided to go with W3 and W5. Just a little W5 down at the bottom closest to the head and then blend it out with the W3. And then I decided to add a little bit of W3 into the rocks as well. Again, just to make them look a little bit more natural. And then now that all of my critters have been colored, I'm gonna give them all some rosy cheeks using R11 and R20. I did do a couple layers of that R20 to make sure it would show up nice, and then just blended out the edges with the R11 to help that fade into the fur or feathers or reptile skin, whatever it was. And then for the little pom-pom flowers, I wanted to bring in some orange since orange and blue are natural opposites on the color wheel. I went with YR12, YR14, and YR18. I'll also use that for some of the stripes on the party hat. And I really, really love how this combo just brings in a bit of like a, a sunset kind of shade. I think it's really lovely. I'm gonna also do the ribbon on the gift in orange, since like I said, blue and orange are natural pairings. Since they're opposites on the color wheel, they have a lot of um, punchy contrast. Then I'm going to move on to my trees and I decided to go with the E20s today. I typically use the E50s for trees, but I just wanted to do something a little bit different. So I'm using E23, E25, and E27. So I started with that E27, just adding in a little bit here and there to create that contrast. And then I'm going to blend that out with the E25 still sticking pretty close to the outside edges of the tree um, trunks. I always wanna say stumps, but that's when the tree is cut. So uh, tree trunks and um, making sure that I have plenty of room for that lightest shade, the E23, so that we do get a nice bit of highlight because it's having both those darker shades and the lighter shades that are gonna create more dynamics in your coloring. So I wanted to make sure to include that. I love that we have this new style of tree as well. I'm huge on scene building elements to create really diverse and interesting scenes. So I love that we have new trees, a new style of flower, and even a slightly new style of grasses. I did add some of those browns into the party hats because I wanted to keep more of this kind of earthy, neutral, more masculine color palette. And then for the leaves on the trees, I wanted to do something that would tie in with the olive that I had already used on the um, frilled lizard, but I did want it to be, you know, its own shade so that they wouldn't be looking like they're made of the same thing. Obviously they're not. So I pulled in YG63, YG67, and then added to that G99, which is a very olive toned green. I don't know if you can make out the tiny print on the cap there, but the name of it is actually olive. So having that in the mix, I think really helps tie in with the lizard while still standing out enough on its own. And somehow I feel like the desaturated greens in this color palette just really suit Australia. I, like I said, I've never been there, but when I think of it, like this is the color palette that comes to mind with the really vibrant blue of the ocean and the orange of the sun and then the browns and these more olivey desaturated greens. That's just what I envision when I think of Australia. 
Either way, it seems like a country with an absolutely gorgeous landscape and such a rich and unique history, and I really hope that someday I get to go and see it for myself. I did also add some of that green in for the rest of the stripes on the party hats. Um, the smaller ones only had one stripe left to go. The largest one had two, but it was the top and bottom. So I just filled in both of those with those greens to keep the color palette all the same. And then I did have to bring in the BG45 to do one more of the little um, tassels at the top. Then I brought in a black Sakura jelly roll pen to go over the eyes of any of the critters that have their eyes open. So two of the kangaroos and the frilled lizard. It's an extra step, but it really does make their eyes bright and shiny. And then I trimmed these images out with their matching dyes. For the background elements, I'm going to be trimming down some Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock. For the first part, I'm going to take the grass portion of the mushroom border, and then for the second, I'm going to take the second of the simple stitch hillside borders. It just happens to match the arch of the grass from the mushroom border perfectly. So I'm going to trim both of those out and set those aside while I work on my sky. For that, I'm gonna take a full sheet of the Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock that I've cut down to four and a quarter by five and a half, so it's the same size as the front of a standard size card. And I'll use the Lawn Fawn Cloudy Stencil to add some Distress Oxide ink. I'm using Salvage Patina for the sky. And I am going to continue turning that stencil as I go down the panel so I get a different cloud formation each time using firmer pressure as I go right off the stencil and then easing up as I go higher so that it gets a softer, more dreamy quality to it, which I really enjoy. Once I have three cloud formations, I'll add just a little bit of ink down at the bottom in case any of that white would show so that it will match the tone of the rest of the panel. And then I'm going to splatter with some of that same ink by pressing it onto an acrylic block, mixing it with a little bit of water to make it more fluid, and then picking it up with a thin paintbrush and tapping it off the side. I'll set that one aside and move on to the ground. And for that, I'm going to use some antique linen. I'm gonna put a good amount of this down at the bottom. I want the bottom edge to be lighter and then the top detail with the stitching to be a little bit darker. I like to emphasize that stitching detail whenever possible because I just think it's such a cool feature. So I am going to bring in some gathered twigs to darken that up on the top edge. Like I said, it is going to be quite a bit darker. So I'll add that on fairly thickly and then I'll go back to my antique linen and just blend between the two until the transition is nice and smooth. And then I also want to add some splatter detail to this panel because it's gonna help it look more earthy, like little pebbles and stones and things. So I'm gonna put both of those shades onto my acrylic block and add those. I love the way the lighter shade looks on the darker blended part of the panel. And then of course the dark part is what's gonna add a lot of that little stony texture. So I'm gonna do that until I'm happy with it, and then I'll set this piece aside to dry, clean up my mat, and then I'll bring in that grass. So I'm gonna use bundled sage down at the bottom, so it's a little bit softer on the bottom edge, just like with the earth. And then for the top edge, I'm gonna bring in mowed lawn. I'm gonna be careful how I blend this on because I don't wanna bend the little points of my grasses, so I'm more pouncing it at the top edge of the grass until I have enough of that on there and I like the way that that is looking. And then I will go back to the lighter ink blending tool and just smooth that out. I'm not gonna do the splatter on the grass though. Just gonna leave it as is. So now that these pieces are done, I can assemble them. I'll add a little bit of the glue tube to the bottom of the grass and then line up the earth down below or the dirt so that I have a little bit of that grass peeking up and I'll just adjust that until I have the amount of the grass showing that I want, and then I can adhere this to the sky background. 
The panel that had the dirt and the grass ended up being just slightly larger than the sky, so I did have a little bit of excess. So I'm just gonna grab my Cutter B Teflon coated scissors and trim that off. And then I actually trimmed the entire panel down with the outside in stitch rectangle stackables. So that it would just have that stitching detail all around the outside edges, which I think helps look your card look more finished. Then I'm going to ink up my sentiment using Versafine Onyx Black ink because it lays so well over the Distress Oxide inks. I'm actually doing part of the sentiment up at the top and then the rest down at the bottom. So it says hopping by to say happy birthday. And I'd stamp that down twice to make sure it was nice and bold and then I'll set that aside to dry. In the meantime, I've created a card base out of the brand new Tide Pool cardstock, which I absolutely love. And I'm going to stamp on the inside using some peacock ink. So I did the little um, kangaroo and the little jump mark and have a kangarific day. So I just stamped that down at the bottom edge. So there's plenty of room for a message to my recipient. And then I added some Scotch 3M foam tape to the back of my focal panel. So I'm just peeling off those release papers and then I'll line that up in the center of the card front. So I have a little bit of that Tide Pool cardstock showing through on all four sides, which I think just really adds a nice pop. It gives it almost a framed up look. So now I can bring in my images. I'm gonna start with my trees since they're going in the background. I'm gonna put the larger tree over to the left to kind of balance out the sentiment. And then the smaller tree is going to go over toward the right hand side. I'm placing it back a little bit farther in the scene as well so it looks like it is the same size but just farther in the distance. And then I'm going to arrange my kangaroos since they are the main feature of this card. So I just wanna make sure I have the placement correct before I start adhering them down. I'm gonna put mama up toward the top of the scene, kind of right underneath the sentiment. And I purposely avoided adding any glue underneath her little paws so that I could tuck the gift into those. Because if you know my cards, you know I always have like a little story that I'm telling as I'm creating the scenes. And typically when I create a birthday card, it's somebody's birthday that is featured on the card. But for this one, I decided that the little Joeys are headed off to their friend's birthday party and mom is going there as kind of like their little chaperone because they're too little to go all on their own. So she's carrying their gift for them and they are super excited to see their friend whose birthday it is. So I'm not sure who the birthday kid is. It could be another kangaroo. It could be a koala. It could be a wallaby. It could be maybe a platypus. It could be so many different things. So if you have an idea of whose birthday it is, you can leave it down in the comments. I would love to hear your continuation of this little story. So we've got the kookaburra and the frilled lizard who are just the observers to this happy little scene as these kiddos are rushing off to celebrate their friend and play all the birthday games and eat some birthday cake and maybe come back with some birthday treat bags and do all the things that little kids do at birthday parties. I remember those days so well from when my boys were little and uh, yeah, just really special memories. But I am just using the accessory images to fill in the rest of this scene. I'm adding the little party hats to each of the kangaroos. And then using the stones and the grasses and the flowers to fill in any gaps. And just make the scene look really full and balanced and inviting. Also, you may notice that I'm kind of blocking in some images around that happy birthday sentiment. Because it's on that busy splattered background, I was worried that it might not stand out enough and it is like the main part of the sentiment, the happy birthday greeting. So to fix that, I kind of blocked in some of the images around it, adding that little joey right above, and then the grasses above the H, and then over toward the right hand, we have the cluster of the little grass and the rock and the flower. And it kind of just frames it up a little bit and draws the eye to that sentiment, which just makes it a bit more legible, I think.
I did feel like there was a little too much space in that top right corner, so I'm taking one of the butterfly trails from the Kangarific stamp set, and the butterfly is from the Kangarific add-on, and I'm going to add that to the top right corner. The ink that I used was Narwhal, and that kind of finished things off for me. So that is going to finish off this card. I decided not to add any glitter because it's more of a masculine card, but there is another peek at the inside. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, this is also going to be on the Lawn Fawn YouTube channel today, so you can check it out a second time over there if you'd like. Please do give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. That really helps me out. And you can leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. All of the products I use will be listed and linked for you in the description bar below. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. You can click on either one to check them out. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I hope you had a good one, and I'll see you soon in another video. Bye-bye!